4. Orchestra, be fast, please. Page 4. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be season refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers, there shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again over the hills and the valleys, sound of, of abundance of rain. There shall be showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing, come and now honor thy word. There shall be showers of blessing, oh, that today they might fall. Now, as to God we are confessing, now as on Jesus we call, there shall be showers of blessing, if we bear trust and obey. Shall be season refreshing if we let God have his way. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead.
topic today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles. Acts 26. Acts 26. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify, that after the most straitest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am except these bonds. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up, and the governor, and Bernice, and they that sat with them. And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man doeth nothing worthy of death, or of bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. Acts 27. 
And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. And entering into a ship of Adramitium, we launched meaning to sail by the coasts of Asia, one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day, we touched at Zidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against Nidus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Salmoni, and hardly passing it, came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh whereunto was the city of Lycia. Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenice and there to winter, which is an haven of Crete and lieth toward the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocladon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, strake sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit, we must be cast upon a certain island. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded, and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again, and found it fifteen fathoms. Then, fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And we were in all in the ship, two hundred three score and sixteen souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded, if it were possible, to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea, and loosed the rudder bands, and hoised up the mainsail to the wind, and made toward shore. 
and falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves, and the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land, and the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. Rapture to Jimmy Jordan, to enter into rest. 
The phenomenon of a flight never ceases to amaze. And the spectacle is that much more when it's about to take off and go higher. And now, it's time to take you higher for a glorious flight of showers. Attention, please. The Global Crusade Flight GCWFK 800 is now ready for boarding. All checked in partakers are advised to proceed for boarding with their prayer requests. Yes, the Global Crusade Flight is about to take off again from divine solution higher to showers of blessings through Christ. It's Port Hackett Live. Showers coming from heaven. The October edition of the ongoing Global Crusade with Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui is going to be wonderful. For your family, for your wife and husband, for your children. Live from the Garden City, straight to the world, their satellite and all our social media platforms. Friday, 29th October till Sunday, November 7, 2021. Towers coming from heaven as the rain comes down. So your word will come. Your wonders will come. Your miracle will come. Your salvation will come. Every good thing will come in Jesus' name. Showers coming down. The phenomenon of a flight never ceases to amaze. And the spectacle is that much more when it's about to take off and go higher. And now, it's time to take you higher for a glorious flight of showers. We're taking our flight to Patakot. Attention, please. The Global Crusade Flight GCWFK 800 is now ready for boarding. All checked in partakers are advised to proceed for boarding with their prayer requests. Before we take off for Port Harcourt, hear this good news of a wonderful miracle of healing from COVID-19 during the Abuja Crusade when the man of God prayed. I almost died. I just thought it was malaria. I never knew it was COVID. Death took over me. I had to pray my last prayer. I was rushed to the isolation center because I was tested COVID. And there, many people had died. The first day I got there, three people died. And uh, in the midnight, another two people died. And I was say, I have said my last prayer because people are dying too much there. The GS heard about it, and then he took the phone, and then he phoned me. When he phoned, my wife took the phone, and he prayed for me. And when he prayed for me, immediately I got healed. Immediately after the GS prayer, I wanted to go to the toilet. And I told my wife, and my wife said they should bring the wheelchair that they usually use to take me to the toilet. And I told her, did you know who has just prayed for me now? She said, yes, I think that's the case. I'm not going to use the wheelchair anymore. The strength came, and I jumped up immediately. And I went to the toilet, came back, and all the people in the hall, they were very surprised because they have been carrying me to the toilet with the wheelchair since I arrived here. Now I am living, I am fine, no more COVID, and I'm rejoicing with my family. I have received my own miracle. Call! for showers of blessings. Yes, the Global Crusade flight is about to take off again. Higher to showers of blessings through Christ. It's Port Hackett Live. Showers coming from heaven. The October edition of the ongoing Global Crusade with Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui. And listen to me, you hear it from the office mouth. Port Harcourt Global Crusade from the 27th, that's the Wednesday, until the 31st, that's a Sunday five. Powerful days, the crusade will pack together all the miracles you have ever desired in your life. For your spirit, for your soul, for your body, for your family, every member of your church, and for those who are at the point of almost passing on, power is coming. Showers of blessing coming. And it will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. Power ministrations from Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui will be live from the Garden City, straight to the world, their satellite, and all our social media platforms. The Lord will do wonders among you. For your exclusive priority flights, 5 p.m. daily, take off time. Go get your boarding pass now. Don't fly alone. Also bring a board. 
family and friends, colleagues in the office, all those you know. Get your free boarding pass. It's available in all Deeper Life Bible churches worldwide. You can also get your boarding pass free online. Towers coming from heaven as the rain comes down. So your word will come. Your wonders will come. Your miracle will come. Your salvation will come. Every good thing will come in Jesus' name. Showers coming down. Happy showers of blessing. This is the promise of God. There shall be seasons. Have you heard that the Dukuni with the lion is a pack of shells and let it flow back to the No, I have no idea. Oh, yes, it will be careful. Shells and let it flow back to the Will you be there? Sure, I'll be there. I cannot miss it. Hello, friends, mommies and daddies, uncles and aunties, and my fellow children. We are inviting you for shells of blessing, global crusade, happening live in Port Harcourt from 27th of October to 31st of October. Come and be blessed. There will be lots and lots of blessings. The sick will be healed, the sinners will be saved, the poor will be rich, and promotion will go break it down and success for all. Come and be blessed. You just heard now in that TV is from Pastor Ajayi at his solo. Is Pastor Ajayi at his solo? Are you here today? I go Pastor Ajayi from his solo. Are you here? Come. You can come up here if you are there. Praise the Lord. Today we celebrate life. No death. I said no premature death. Life. Come. God bless you. God bless you. Please get up. I want you to remove your something. I want you to testify directly. We've seen it. We'll see you on the screen. Now we'll see your life. God bless you. Take over. Praise the Lord. I give glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done for me through our Father in the Lord who delivered me through his prayer from COVID. 19. Praise the Lord. All along, it started from the middle of July. And I was thinking that it was malaria. So it has entered in. I went from one hospital to another. And uh, in the third hospital, the knew that it was COVID and they tested me and they, everything has gone into the lungs and then my hair everything, oxygen gone down I couldn't walk anymore I was carried on the way here into the vehicle and with oxygen so that I will not, I will not die on the way and by the time we got to the isolation center and uh, they look at me he said, this is a serious case. And he placed me on full oxygen. And I was there right from uh, August 1st. And uh, the first day, about three people of my age that were rushed there died within two hours. In the midnight, two people died again. So I was thinking I will, all lose, I will also die. And uh, the information was passed to our father in the Lord that your son is on oxygen and that he's about giving up. 
and actually by the second day, which is Monday, it was terrible. Tuesday, it was in fact, I prayed my last prayer on Tuesday morning. And I said, Lord, if there's anything that remains that I've not confessed to you, forgive me. Because the tense was so much. And then I actually was waiting to go to the other side, later by the evening. By 12.30 to 1, the phone rang. My wife picked the phone, and he said, it's our father, it's our Jesus. Praise the Lord! And immediately, he asked, my, my wife explained everything to him, and he asked my wife to give me the phone. I received the phone. He prayed. Brethren, 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 please, God has given us a pastor, a father, an apostle with general authority in heaven, also and on earth. Praise the Lord. He prayed and he said, everything that is blocking my throat should be cleared. He said, all symptoms, everything should go away. The strength that was not there, because when I arrived there, I cannot, I cannot walk anymore. If I want to go to the toilet, they will wheel me on the wheelchair. That money, they still wheel me on the wheelchair. After the prayer of our Father in the Lord, I asked my wife, I wanted to go to the toilet. He said the boy should bring the wheelchair. I asked her, do you know who has prayed for me now? She said, yes. I said, if you know, I am not going to ride on that wheelchair anymore. The strength has come. Hallelujah. The strength came. And I jumped up on my feet. And I walked straight to the toilet. And I came back. Praise the Lord. The appetite was not there anymore. He commanded the appetite to come back. The strength to come back. That very afternoon, my lunch was double. Because the appetite has come back. I started eating well. And everything was going on fine. And the people, you know, the doctors, they will not know what has happened to me. When they came, the second day, they said, this Baba, let's remove this full oxygen. They remove it. The third day, they look at it. They said, let's reduce it to 0.05. They remove it. On Friday, they remove everything. On Sunday, praise the Lord, they discharge me. The Lord has done it for me. And please, God has given us a gift in this church. Don't go anywhere anymore. Please, stay here. Listen to the word. Obey the word. And continue with holiness and righteousness. The devil cannot take you from his hand. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Now, I wanted to tell you this. That was on the phone today, face to face. The Lord answer all your prayers in Jesus' name. He will put a song in your mouth. He is praising God. He is rejoicing. He is singing a new song. I transfer all the victory to you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your power. We thank you for the preservation of life. And we thank you that you are... Praise the Lord. It's going to rain. For me. For you. For everyone in Jesus' name. Here in River State, I welcome you. All the states of Nigeria, I welcome everyone. 
And then all the nations of Africa, Europe, Americas, Asia, everywhere, I welcome you to a spectacular time in Jesus' name. It's like we're riding bicycles and then we got to the first place. Now we change, we move down to a motorcycle. And then we ran faster. And now we got a car. Then we got a boat. Now we've got aeroplane. And we fly into these showers of blessing. Everyone, everywhere. Showers upon your life in Jesus' name. There'll be salvation. There'll be healing. There'll be deliverances. There'll be miracles. The spectacular will take place in your life in Jesus' name. Candidate for miracle, where are you? Father, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you at this time and bless your name. We know you prepared showers of blessings for everyone. And anyone here, as we come, we pray, nobody will go back empty-handed in Jesus' name. Individuals, families, churches, everywhere, all nations, online, physical, showers upon everyone. Confirm your power and your miracle in every life. We thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. We will see. We will hear. We will experience. Nobody will be left behind. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. That sentence you have been hearing many times. Many years, there shall be showers of blessing. Did you know it is from the Bible? It's a promise of God. It's a prophetic word the Lord has preserved for us. It's in Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26. And I will make them, and the places round the bout my heel, a blessing. I thought you would say amen. amen. And I will cause the shower to come down in its season. There shall be showers of blessing. That's the promise of God. He said, I will. And when God says he will do something, it will be done. And when he makes a promise like that, it's a promise for every hour. A promise for every place. A promise for every person. And it's a promise in particular for you. There shall be showers of blessing. Now, as you join that with Hebrews chapter 13, reading from verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ. The same yesterday and today and forever. That is, when the Lord said, There shall be showers of blessing. The people were waiting. They were waiting for the Messiah. They were waiting for the Savior. They were waiting for the Redeemer. There shall be. And when Christ came, then the showers began to fall and miracles began to happen in unprecedented manners and the people that had understanding they woke up here is what god said there shall be showers of blessing there shall be at that time of ezekiel it was future i will i will make the clouds i will send the rain I will do wonders among the people. And now, even though it was future at that time, Christ came. And when Christ came, and then he began to move in all the towns 
and villages and communities and to everyone in the land. Then the reality and the fulfillment of those showers began to be fulfilled in their midst. And every day anyone meeting Christ, as we're meeting Christ tonight, any time Christ gave an invitation, as he's giving invitation to you tonight, any time Christ touched anyone, as he's touching you tonight, the showers began to fall on them from heaven. And now Christ has gone to heaven. And it's over there. And it's now pouring the blessings down and the showers down on everyone. It's still the same. Tonight, I'm talking to you on showers of blessing from the unchangeable Christ. Unchangeable Christ, the Savior. Unchangeable Christ, the miracle worker. Unchangeable Christ, the healer. Unchangeable Christ, the deliverer. And it's coming from him. Now, we're going to do something very simple for you to remember. And for you to know what the Lord is going to do in your life. That word showers. Showers of blessing. Showers. S is for salvation. Tonight, salvation is coming your way. H is for healing. And tonight, as the rains begin to fall, and no power can send that rain back to the sky. S for salvation. H for healing. You are healed. Whatever the sickness, whatever the infirmity, healing is coming your way. I receive. O is obtainment. When something is given to you, and you are not just looking at it, you stretch your hand, you grab that thing, you receive that thing, you obtain. And what you obtain is what you receive. What you receive is what you experience. And that thing you receive, that thing you obtain, that thing that becomes yours, it will be seen in your life. Tonight, I will get something. Tonight, I will obtain something. It's the part of the showers that is your personal possession. W is wonders. Somebody help me shout wonders there. Shout it as if you have it now. Wonders. Wonders will come your way. The wonder of salvation. The wonder of healing. The wonder of deliverance. The wonder of blind eyes being opened. And the wonders of the lame rising up and walking. And the wonder of impossibilities becoming possible in your life wonders i shout wonders he is exaltation christ is exalted and then he was exalted that wherever you are and whoever you are he will lift you up he will exalt you you are in the dungeon he'll dig you up from there you're in the valley, he'll dig you up from there. It's part of the showers. The showers that come without an exhortation, then that shower will not be complete. But showers will be complete in your life tonight. R is restoration. Restoration. Restoration from heaven. Restoration by heaven. Restoration to restore you to everything Adam and Eve lost, everything that you have lost in your life, there is restoration tonight, restoration, and then S is supernatural supply. 
supernatural supply. The showers, salvation, healing, obtainment, wonders, exaltation, restoration, supernatural supply. Those are the three points I bring to you tonight. We're going to go into the message now. Number one, and here are things coming your way. Here are things you are going to possess. And when we call and we say, you want this, you want this, where are you? Immediately you respond so that heaven will know that this is what you are looking for. You will get something tonight. Yes, salvation for all accused men salvation for all accused men look at romans chapter 3 and i'm reading from verse 9 romans chapter 3 verse 9 what then are we better than they are we jews better than the gentiles are we men better than the women are we parents better than the children are we wives better than the blacks are we colored people better than the wise? Are we better? In any nation, there are people who are making comparison that this is better than that. As we consider individuals, it's asking us the question, are you better than the other one? Other people are devils and you are the angel. Other people are sinners and you are the saints. No, in no wise. You are not better than your neighbor. You are not better than the other one. For we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. Proved that they are all under sin. That's why it says, look at verse 23 there. In verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All, all. That he is, the Jew is not better than the Gentile. All have sinned. The churchgoer is not better than those who don't go to church. All have sinned. The young is not better than the adult. All have sinned. Everyone, everyone, we carry the badge of Adam with us. The nature of Adam with us. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What's the solution then? Salvation for all accused men. That salvation is coming to you today. Once you accept, you are a sinner. You accept, you have sinned. You, have, you accept, you are not better than other people. The same bondage of sin that paralyzes other people. The same bondage of sin makes you incapable, unable to live right and to be righteous in the sight of the Lord. Once you accept that, then the free offer of the salvation of God will come to you tonight. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, being justified freely, you cannot pay for salvation. You cannot cry and shed tears that will fill the bottle that will qualify you for salvation. You cannot roll on the ground a long time enough to qualify you for salvation. You cannot pay money to qualify you for salvation. Be justified freely by his grace. That grace is here tonight. That grace will save you tonight. The moment you stretch out your hand of faith and you say, Lord, here am I. I cannot pay for salvation. Here am I. My good words cannot mount up to the point I will have salvation. Here am I. All the good deeds I've done, all the church going I've done, cannot merit salvation. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Redemption in Christ. Salvation in Christ. Forgiveness in Christ justification in christ as you come to christ tonight you are connected with salvation i said as you come to christ tonight you are connected with salvation that's the reason why i normally give a call an invitation and i say you are there 
you want the salvation of the Lord? It's coming from heaven. It's part of the showers. Where are you? Raise up your hand. And you raise up your hand. And if whatever I tell you come out or whatever, you do that, that salvation will come to you. What am I saying? What I'm saying is this. The rain is falling. The showers are coming. You must come out and bring your bucket out. And then you will fill your cup, fill your drum, and fill your bucket to overflow in, in Jesus' name. But if the rain is falling, if the showers are coming down, and then you lock yourself in the house, and you put your bucket upside down and while the rain is falling and everybody is satisfied you are there and you don't come out you'll not be part of the beneficiaries of the showers but as the rain is falling and you bring out your heart and you bring out your personality and you say yes lord the rain is falling for everyone i will be a partaker salvation will come to you your heart might have accused you the neighbors might have accused you and everyone around even the devil might have accused you as if you are the greatest sinner in the world this salvation is for all accused men that salvation will come to you christ is inviting you the savior is inviting you and as you respond, as the beginning of the showers, salvation for all accused men is yours. It's mine. I said it's mine. You will get saved in Jesus' name. The next is age. And that age in the showers coming from above, that age is healing. Healing through his accepted message healing through his accepted message you heard about a doctor you have a challenge somebody told you about that doctor it was okay i hear but you never responded you never took action the medicine will not just come and jump on you and the injection will not just penetrate you while you are there you will come you will understand if you believe the message you are told about the healer you will take action now jesus christ is our healer jesus christ is the doctor of all doctors internally he will heal you externally he will heal you your blind eyes, it will open. Your lame legs will rise up and walk. Whatever is wrong in your life tonight, he'll perform that operation right there. Healing. Somebody shout, healing. Healing through his accepted message. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 53. And I'm reading from verse 1. I say, chapter 53, verse 1, was believed our report. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The people who believe the message were report that Christ heals. He heals blind eyes. He heals madness. He delivers from all the torments and the attacks of Satan. It takes tumor away. It takes a near away. It's able to open even the deaf ears and the tight tongue he will lose. And then if there's anything that is no more functioning, no more working in your life tonight, he'll make that part of the body to work. If you're not hearing, you will hear and will say Christ is the healer of every sickness as we accept that's why the prophet is asking the question was believed our report and to whom is the arm of the lord revealed look at verse 4 in verse 4 it says surely 
he has borne our griefs he's taking it away already that's what you need to know that all your griefs all your suffering all your infirmity all the problems you have everything is laid on christ is that all the amen you have and he has carried our sorrows all our sorrows is taking everything away yet we did him we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted look at verse five it says but he was wounded for our transgression it's a substitute all the transgression all the sin all the evil that we had him before he suffered on the cross of calvary to take everything away and then it says the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes were healed when you make that personal and you know with his stripes and the weeping pools i am healed and you believe it in the bottom of your heart and you know that even today whatever the sickness it's impossible with man it is not impossible with god with god all things are possible your case possible your healing possible your deliverance possible your miracle possible look at matthew chapter 8 reading from verse 16 it says in verse 16 when the evening was come they brought unto him this messiah they brought unto him the savior they brought unto him this the healer they brought unto him this deliverer they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and they cast out the devils the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick healed all that were sick how many people will he heal tonight he healed all he has not changed jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever he healed all that was sick why look at verse 17 that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet Isaiah the prophet the prophets only said only spoke what he got from heaven there's no lie in heaven there's no deception in heaven and there is uh, no politics hanky panky in heaven and the heavens always revealed the truth to the prophets and the prophet Isaiah received that truth and that revelation that himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses he will take your infirmity your sickness and that pain he will take it away very easily you'll not feel any pain He'll perform the miracle tonight in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 24, it says, Who his own self, his own self, his own self bear our sins in his own body, his own self, in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed i am healed don't just say amen i am healed cancer will be healed tonight all the ulcer will be healed tonight and the brain problem will be healed tonight that thing that is swollen in your body will be healed tonight that thing that causes pain in your life tonight you are healed in jesus name s for salvation h 
for healing. And now we have all oh, the obtainment of abundant mercy. Obtainment of abundant mercy. Why do we need mercy? Because we face judgment. Because we've done things that will land us in prison. That prison is not only 10 years, 70 years, 100 years. That prison is going to be everlasting. And it's, only, it's not only prison with hard labor. It's prison with suffering, unbearable pain. And now we're seeing... What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How can I be relieved from the pain of the evil that I have done? There's only one way. Mercy. The mercy of God. Obtainment of abundant mercy. Look at First Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. It says, who was before a blasphemer? And a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtained mercy. I couldn't come to God with merit. I couldn't tell God, oh God, look at me. I'm good. I'm nice. I'm pure. I'm righteous. Because of that, show me mercy. Say, no, since you say you merit it already, you cannot marriage mercy. It's when you don't have a marriage and you say nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Rock of ages, clear for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from the wounded side of Lord be of sin, the double kill. That's when the mercy will come to you. I see somebody here, mercy is coming your way. And the mercy of God that forgives you is the mercy of God that cancels all the punishment you should have had and now as you come and you say Lord I'm, I don't merit it you don't merit salvation I don't merit it you don't merit forgiveness I don't merit it you don't merit a place in heaven I don't merit it I don't merit justification and joy for life and for eternity and what I do not have by marriage I'm going to have by mercy. That's the shower obtainment of abundant mercy. It says, I was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief look at verse 14 in verse 14 and the grace of our lord the grace of our lord the grace of our lord in the world there's no grace you see i'm looking for work they say what's your qualification what's your certificate I don't have certificate. Give me the job by grace. They say it doesn't happen like that. You go to the bank and you want money, and uh, you tell the uh, cashier there, "I need some money. How much do you need? I need, uh, you know, these thousands." And they say, "Do you have an account here?" No, I don't have an account. Give me the money by grace. They say it doesn't work like that. You go to the market and you're looking for food, and say, "I need some food." here they say yes everything is available where is uh, you know the price are you able to pay the price uh -uh. i want to get everything in the market by grace the world does not work like that only god works by grace and what we do not have uh, and we want to have is only god that can provide it for us by grace and then it says and the grace of our lord would exceeding abundance with faith and love which is in christ jesus tonight 
every blessing of heaven you need what you cannot get from the world because the world does not operate by grace but everyone operates by grace what you need tonight you'll have it by grace in jesus name look at verse 15 in verse 15 it says this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation worthy for all to accept when you accept the grace of God, like everybody else accepts the grace of God, what he gets by grace, you will get by grace, she will get by grace, everyone will have showers of miracles tonight by grace in Jesus' name. It says this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners to save sinners to save who tell me tell me you know some people i can't get saved tonight i say why i want to turn over a new leaf become a better person before i can be saved then it's not saving sinners you've already you know saved yourself cleanse yourself you're already righteous it's not saving the self-righteous it's saving uh, sinners other people say i want to i want to do something and i want to uh, discipline myself and live a very righteous life so that when i come to christ i'll say christ look at what i've done i've made myself righteous he didn't come to save the righteous he came to save us sinners as you are there tonight and you feel the guilt of your sin and the power of your sin and your helplessness in your sin you are a candidate for salvation it will save you it will forgive you it will transfer your name from the dungeon of darkness and bring your name to life and light in jesus name here is a faithful saying and worthy of all to accept that jesus christ came into the world to save sinners of whom i am chief what does that mean Saul, who became Paul, said, I was bad, very bad, as badness could be. I was injurious, as any violent man could ever be. I was a blasphemer. I was terrible. I was the chief, the highest, the greatest, the most wicked of all sinners. If God can save me, he was saying, uh, the chief of sinners, then uh, all the other people that kill behind me, the Lord will save them. He will save you tonight. He will change your life tonight. If he could save Saul and he became Paul, there is hope for you. Tonight is the night of your salvation. I don't have to do any other thing. Christ is Savior. He came into the world to save sinners. Look at verse 16. It says in verse 16, I'll be it for this cause. I obtained mercy. Remember, you are not coming. I paid much money to the church. Uh -uh. I obtained mercy. I did good. I sent somebody to school. I gave clothes to the naked. I gave water to the, to the thirsty. That's not why you're saved. It says, I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ my show forth or long suffering for a pattern what he did for me is a pattern what he did for me is a model what he did for me is an example for a pattern to them which you hereafter believe on him as you believe on him tonight eternal life will come to you the believer on him to life everlasting is salvation each healing o obtainment of abundant mercy w what's w 
I said, what's your own double you there? What are you going to have tonight? Wonders. Enemies will look at you and wonder. The sickness that had been there, and that sickness is going away, he will look back and look at you. No more sickness, no more infirmity, and wonder. The evil spirit that possessed your life before, that evil spirit will come out. And as that evil spirit is coming out, he looked back like that. He said, forever, forever, I cannot get into him. I cannot get into her anymore. They will wonder. And you, you have been on crutches before for how many years now? And today, the Lord will work wonders in your life. And those crutches will vanish away in Jesus' name. And then, as you go back home, and you stand up straight, and you are walking straight, and you even run, you'll find people will say, is that him? Is that her? They say, no. It's like his twin brother, twin sister. You say, yes, it is me. What happened to you? What happened to you? You got eight wonders in your life in Jesus' name. W now is wonders of all round miracles. You turn this side, miracle. You move on here, miracle. You turn the other side, miracle. Anywhere you are in the arena, anywhere you are far away there, as we pray and mention the name of Jesus, wonders will come to you in jesus name look at acts chapter 2 we're reading from verse 22 acts chapter 2 reading from verse 22 ye men of israel hear these words jesus of nazareth a man approved of god among you by miracles and wonders and signs a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. A man approved of God among us tonight, Lord Jesus Christ, there will be miracles. <clears throat> there will be miracles. There will be wonders. There will be signs in Jesus' name, which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know we have already heard some testimonies and those testimonies and many more will be multiplied in your life look at verse 43 there verse 43 it tells us in verse 43 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders how many wonders many wonders i said what kind of wonders many wonders for the young for the old for the educated for the normal people for the boys for the girls many wonders and signs were done by the apostles christ did the wonders and then he transferred the power to his own disciples and everywhere they met wonders took place and everywhere as we're meeting together and we meet in the name of jesus wonders that corner wonders in front of me here wonders far at the back when we mention the name of jesus there will be wonders on this other side wonders in your life wonders of all round miracles the next word there is e exaltation from abject misery Exalt, exaltation from uh, abject misery let's look at first samuel chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 8 first samuel chapter 2 we're reading from verse 8. See what the Lord will do for you tonight. I said, see what the Lord will do for you tonight. Are you the one I'm talking about? Remember, anywhere you are, any country you are, and you're online, 
Here is miracle waiting for you. Exaltation from abject misery. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8, He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to search them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. He has power, he has wisdom, he has ability to set the whole globe on invisible pillars. And the globe is rotating, and yet nothing is shifting. The God who has the power and the wisdom and he has the ability to set the whole world upon those invisible pillars. That same God will lift you up today. Out of the dungeon, he'll lift you up. Out of your poverty, he'll lift you up. Out of your suffering, he'll lift you up. Out of your imprisonment, it will lift you up. If you have been lying down there and cockroaches are walking over you and reptiles are walking over you and all those, uh, you know, messengers of the devil, they trample over you, you are coming out of that situation. <laughs> Exaltation from abject misery. And now we have our, our is restoration. Somebody help me shout, restoration. Restoration to our almighty maker. The Lord will restore you. Your soul, your spirit, your life, every part of you, restoration tonight. And every good thing you have lost in life, restoration tonight. You are restored to the almighty maker, the one who created you. And he says, I know the plan I have for you. I know the good thing I have for you. And that good thing uh, that has eluded you, that has escaped you for a long time, uh, you are going to be restored to the blessings of God. Look at Joel chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 12. Joel chapter 2 verse 12. Therefore also now says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting, uh, and weeping and with mourning turn unto me he's saying look at the direction you have been going and you have lost valuable things in life you have lost your way and you have lost your inheritance you have lost the good things you should have had because of your own evil doing he says but Restoration can come tonight. Turning around can come tonight. If you will turn unto me with all your heart, you don't distribute yourself, your heart, a part to Satan, a part to the world, a part to religion, a part to tradition, but you gather up everything in your life, your whole heart, then you say, I come with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind, and I return unto the Lord without any mind of going back to the devil, or going back to the world, or going back to your sin. It says, turn ye even to me with all your heart. And then he says in verse 13, in verse 13, he says, rend your heart and not your garments. Turn, look at that again, turn, see that, turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, is low to anger, and is of great kindness, and repentance turns around, from the evil, from the judgment he would have given you. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, and I will restore to you all the years that the locusts have eaten. 
He says, I will restore all the joy you have lost, all the health you have lost, all the goodness in life you have lost, all your family that you have lost, everything you have lost, it will restore, restore unto you. And the food and the things you ought to have to keep soul and body together, it will restore everything unto you. And he said, I will. He said, this one is unstoppable. This blessing come upon your life it is unstoppable. I will restore to you not only the days and the weeks or the months, all the years that the locust has eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Look at verse 26. It says in verse 26, after he said, I will restore. And he will restore. Unto me. Unto me. He will restore in Jesus' name. He's willing to do it. That's why he gave the promise. He loves to do that. That's why he gave the promise. And he's ready at this time to bring the restoration in your life. That's why he gave the promise. And he said, I, the God of heaven, I, that Satan cannot stop. I, that for everyone, we're talking about the impartial God. We're talking about the incorruptible God. We're talking about a God that when he makes a promise, he will fulfill that promise in your life. And tonight, somebody help me shout, tonight. That's the night of restoration in your life. And it says, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied 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 and praise the name of the lord your god that has dealt wondrously with you it will deal wondrously with you whosoever whosoever will come to the lord tonight and say lord i am a beneficiary i am a partaker of the showers of blessing and i need full restoration and total restoration in my life and my people shall never be ashamed are you there my people shall never be ashamed are you part of those people my people shall never be ashamed amen Look at verse 32. Verse 32 there tells us, and it shall come to pass that whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whosoever, that corner, whosoever, that place, whosoever, that outside congregation there, whosoever, that person online, as you call on the Lord tonight, deliverance will come. Restoration will come. Salvation will come. The mercy of God will come. A total transformation will come in your life in Jesus' name. Now, S, S is the supernatural supply. 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 It will flow into your life. All the needs of your life, spiritual, physical, all the needs of your life, emotional, all the needs of your life, everything you've been crying about, tonight is the night of fulfillment. The Lord will do it in your life in Jesus' name. Supernatural supply from the acknowledged Messiah. He is the Messiah. That means he is the Christ. He is all in all for you, for me, and for everyone. In John chapter 4 verse 25. John chapter 4 verse 25. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh. 
I know that Messiah's coming. The Messiah was standing in front of her. But she didn't recognize many people like that. The Messiah, the Savior, the Healer, the Helper, the Deliverer is standing right in front of them. And they can't tell. And they, and they say, I know the Savior is coming. He's here. The healer is coming. He's here. The helper is coming. He's here. It is tonight. Your salvation, I said it's tonight. Your healing, I said it's tonight. Your redemption, I said it's tonight. Don't look any other place. Don't look for any other day. He is right here. The woman did not know that. The woman says unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, when he is come, you know, there's some people, they don't know salvation, salvation, Savior is here already. They say, well, we'll get it when we cross over to the other side. They say, nobody can know that he's saved now. Nobody can know that he's healed now. Nobody can know that he's delivered now. But at a future time, when we cross the gate of death and we pass on to the other side, then we will know that we are saved. My friend, it's right here. Salvation, it's right here. Deliverance, it's right here. Miracle, it's right here. She said, when he is come, he will tell us all things. When he is come, he will save us from all our sins. When he is come, he will heal us from all our sicknesses. When he is come, he will perform wonders in every life. Verse 26, in verse 26, Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee, I am he. He has come. He is here. I that speak unto thee, I am the Savior. I am the healer. I am the deliverer. He's there, right there. And as you grieve yourself and offer yourself to him, and now salvation has come. Healing has come. But you know, the showers are going to begin to fall now. I said the showers are going to begin to fall now. Salvation will be given to you right now. Healing will be yours right now. You'll obtain the mercy of God right here tonight in Jesus' name. And then wonder. Can you, can you think about that? That you, you in particular, not another person, you in particular, wonders coming upon your life today. And then it will exalt you. He'll take you out of that veil and valley of crying, of sorrow. He'll bring you to the mountain top of the joy of the Lord in Jesus' name. Restoration. Redemption. Total restoration in your life tonight in Jesus' name. And uh, supernatural what? Supernatural what? My God shall supply all your needs in Christ by Christ Jesus even tonight. Are you ready? Heaven is ready. Are you ready? God is ready. Are you ready? Your salvation is here available. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Salvation is here now. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All, all have sinned, all have sinned. But anyone that wants the guilt taken away, 
the power of sin broken in their lives. This is the time, the hour of your salvation. Anyway, you are at as it's about and eyes are closed, just raise up your hand and say, I accept that tonight. The worst of sinners, I'm having salvation. I accept that tonight. The most terrible of sinners, the Lord says, He'll forgive me. I receive that tonight. Anywhere you are, raise up your hand, raise up your hand, wherever you are, salvation forgiveness coming unto you and the Lord will write your name in heaven as one of the people whose sins are totally forgiven. If you are raising up your hand, you will stand up. You will identify yourself. Salvation is mine. Salvation is mine. Over here in Port Harcourt, in all the other adjoining places, any hallway you are, any other place you are, you are standing up now. Salvation is mine and it is free. It's by the mercy of God. And any city you are in Nigeria, in any state, in any nation, in uh, Africa and beyond Africa, and you are online and you say, I want that salvation now. Christ is there by your side. If the omnipresent one, he will forgive you. Raise up your hand. And then remember, he says, turn unto me with all your heart. Turn to the Lord and say, Lord, I turn away from my sin. I turn away from idols. I turn away from tradition. I turn away from every other God. I turn away from every other religion. I turn to Christ, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Lord. And as you do that, say, I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that Jesus rose again on my behalf. And because of that, all my sins, without exception, every, everything is forgiven. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, immediately they call, that's when you will do it. Salvation has come to you now. Amen. I said salvation has come to you now. Amen. Keep up your hand and pray with you now, Father. What a loving God you are. Lord Jesus, what a ready Savior you are. We thank you because this salvation, this forgiveness, this new life, this regeneration is for everyone that calls upon you. These have called upon you. And those online and those everywhere where we are connected together now, they have called upon you for forgiveness, for freedom, for salvation, for regeneration. Lord, I pray according to your promise, which cannot fail, save everyone now in Jesus' name. Forgive all their sins. Write their names in the book of life in heaven. Let a new life, regenerated life, come upon everyone right now in Jesus' name. Restore your peace, your joy, your new life to everyone right now. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord has done it. He cannot fail. Anytime we ask, He always does as He has promised. Our counselors are there, members of the choir, the ushers, and our leaders, workers. All those counselors are there. As we're doing it here, you are doing it in every location all over Nigeria, all over Africa, and beyond Africa. Let's get those names right now. And then, after we finish that, I'll come back and I'll pray with you. Your healing is today. A pastor now, please come. Right now, our counselors are with you there.
They write down your names, give them your full name, your address, your telephone number, so that we can visit you over and over. And by the grace of God, next Sunday, all throughout South South, we'll be having a, we'll be having a meeting with you in the nearest group of district or this uh, group by the grace of God. Please take all available information needed from them. By the grace of God, your sins are forgiven. The shower of salvation has come upon your life. You are now a new creature. You cannot remain in sin any longer. The power of sin is broken. You are totally set free. As we are doing that, the rest of us, get ready for your showers of miracles, showers of wonders, and showers of all you need in your life. Tonight is your night. Counsel us in the overflow, in adult hall, adult auditoria, do the same thing as we are doing here now. In the youth hall, do the same thing we are doing here now. In the event center, not far away from here, do the same thing you are doing now. In the children auditoria, do the same thing we are doing now. As well as the campus overflow, do the same thing here we are doing now. Shards have come upon everyone already. And by the grace of God, the shards of healing is coming right now. Start saying bye-bye to your sickness. The sicknesses you brought here, you will see them no more. The lame, we don't see their lameness any longer. They will all be drawn. They will all be totally removed tonight. Tonight is your night. You will look for those problems. Satan will look for them. He will not see them. You will not see them. You are free. Get ready. Just be praying now. And be saying bye-bye to whatsoever problem you came with. Blindness is going right now. As a, as a, a, as a prophet comes, as the apostle of this very generation comes, your trouble is going. Lameness will go away. Get ready. Counsel us. Let's do it fastly. The moment you finish, you let us know. So that the second aspect of shards of blessing will start falling. Get ready. Those in the overflow... You let us know also when you are true. Next Sunday, we'll be having our banqueting with all our converts. Those on online, the same thing by 4 o'clock, we'll be having it. They, they tell you when you are having it in the various zone, all over the world, you'll be told... Where you where you be having it, there shall be showers of blessing. Tonight you will testify. Who is going to testify tonight? I can see your hands. Showers of blessings upon you. Showers of blessing upon me. Upon you. Upon your family. Upon your career. Upon your education. Get ready. The clouds are gathered already. The rains are coming. Get ready. You will be wet with miracles of healing. You will be wet with miracles of deliverances. Tonight, creative miracles. God is going to do it for you. God is going to do it for me. Get ready. Counsel us. If you are finished, 
you move towards the back to submit what you have to your supervisor letting us know that now you are true chance of blessing it has started raining you are getting wet already wet with salvation freedom from sin you are going to get wet with deliverances every property of the devil will vanish from your life every touch of the enemy upon your brain upon any organ of your body we get vanished we go away after today no more dialysis your kidney will be whole after today after tonight just a few minutes now you will discover your enlarged heart is totally normalized shouts of blessing for you get ready the clouds have gathered already the rains are falling. Get ready. Your blessing is right coming upon you now. Counselors, if you are finished, go towards your supervisor, submit the decision card, the short slip. Then the counselors, you let me know by waving your hands at me that right now you are finished. The power of God is coming. The touch of God is coming. Remember, divine connection, signs and wonders, divine touch, divine solution, all put together, shouts of blessing upon you. It's coming upon you. I congratulate you tonight is your night tonight is my night tell yourself tonight is my night tell the person next to you tonight is your night tonight 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 get ready remember not of merit but the mercy of God. His mercy is flowing. It will come upon you. Counselors, are you true? Counselors, true? Okay. Those in the outflow, are you true? Now, counselors, you get seated. Or rather, rise up together with others as our pastor, the apostle, the prophet is coming now to bring down the shouts of blessing on you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. You are expecting your shower of miracle, wonders, healing, deliverance. I said, Praise the Lord healing somebody shout healing remember christ jesus the same yesterday today and forever right there where you are those blind eyes will open if you brought anybody deaf and dumb then you touch them their ear after the final amen, check up on them, the deaf ear would have opened. And the dumb tongue will speak out. If you have any tumor near something that is swollen in your body, once we mention the name of Jesus, immediately that swelling must vanish away. Kidney problem healed. Ulcer will be healed. Cancer will be healed. Any pain destroy your body. That pain will vanish away. 
mental problem will be healed. So, anything you want, salvation, full salvation, healing, definite healing and health, you want to obtain an open door, that one is coming, wonders coming, exaltation coming, restoration coming, any part of your body that has been lost, there's spare part in heaven. And that spare part will be supplied. You have restoration of that missing part in Jesus' name. Supernatural. I say supernatural. It's coming upon you right there, right now. After the final amen, there's no doubt about it. The work would have been done. You check up yourself. And you will see that miracle is there. Just close your eyes. Lay one hand where you have the problem. And raise up the other hand if you can. Miracle. Healing. Deliverance. Are you ready? Heaven is ready for you. Father, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you and glorify your name. You are the God that cannot fail. The God that promised showers of blessing. And in that shower, we have healing, we have deliverance, we have restoration, we have the supernatural power coming from heaven upon everyone. I pronounce your healing upon everyone right now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, where there is sickness, any form of sickness, any kind of sickness, bring healing right now in Jesus' name. And those who have been suffering, I pray, you take them away from that dungeon and that pit of suffering and bring them to the mountaintop of health and total miracle in Jesus' name. You are the God that cannot fail. And we pray that your unfailing power will come to everyone right now. Touch them and transform everyone from the top of the head to the tip of the toe. In Jesus' name. By your stripes we're healed. On my right hand, healed. In front of me, healed. On the left hand, healed. And all those places in those halls healed in Jesus' name. Make the impossible possible. Move every mountain of sickness, every mountain of infirmity away from every life in Jesus' name. That mental problem, that insanity, that uh, madness, I command you, come out in jesus name i pray for that swelling any part of the body i command the swelling i command the tumor i command the hernia come out in jesus name i pray for those who have incurable diseases i pray lord that right now that cancer be healed in jesus name also be healed in jesus name Every internal problem, internal sickness, internal pain be removed in Jesus' name. Skin disease be cured right now in Jesus' name. Leprosy be healed right now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, everything your people are expecting, asking from you, answer their prayers now. Let there be total healing. Let there be wonders. Let there be miracle upon every life in Jesus' name. From the top of the head to the tip of the toe. I pray that your healing virtue will come upon them. Everywhere. Here. All over the country. In all the various nations. Those online everywhere. Power to confront their problems rule all the problems away in Jesus name set them free 
manifest the healing perform the miracle let everyone know it and see it and feel it in their body right now thank you lord because i know it's done in jesus name we pray it is done it is done check up yourself you'll see you'll hear and you have a testimony already let me hear a good amen